Getting so social license is also oh important. Um, maybe less so if you're a farmer dealing with a Labour government. Uh, do they really care? I mean, they're not hoping to win any votes, I guess, in regional Australia. Is that why they can ride roughshod when it comes to these transmission lines? Well, of course, he doesn't really believe in social licence. <clears throat> social licence is just code for, well, we'll have a bit of a um, consultation before we impose compulsion on you lot. <clears throat> but what he didn't realise, I think, was that there are some... You see, Victoria has changed a lot <clears throat> in the past 30 years. They haven't built any transmission lines for 30 years in Victoria. Mm -hmm. And there are really quite strong regional communities and they're actually full of Labor voters and, you know, greenies mm. and tree huggers. Um, and there's a, an actor who I think I have seen called Stephen Curry, mm. and I think he lives in that Bendigo region, and he's become the sort of leader of a very vocal resistance group, which is not, you know, redneck farmers. Um, you know, they're kind of Labor voters or maybe even Greens voters. So that is something I think B1 has kind of rather overlooked. Uh, because I think he thought, oh, well, you know, at the end of the day, we can ride rough shot over these people because they don't vote for Labor either. <clears throat> Recall the, um, the, it was at the 2019 election campaign, remember, when he said, if you don't like, my pol like our policies, don't vote for us. Um, you know, I, I think B1 actually has terrible form in really bad policy making, by the way. Um, but now I think he's in a real pickle. And uh, I noticed recently, and you probably did, Rebecca, too, that I think is it the uh, the uh, the National Park or the authority that controls the National Park in uh, Kosciuszko is also arcing up about the transmission lines going through the National Park. Mm. So, you know, best case scenario is that this stuff is hugely delayed. It has also become much, much more expensive there's no material, there are no workers. And initially they were offering farmers, I think about 100,000 for each kilometre of transmission line through their land. There are now talk of that being up to 300,000 um, per kilometre. <clears throat> now, someone pays for that. And actually who pays for that are electricity consumers mm. because mm. the transmission costs feed directly into the electricity prices. So, you know, there's no free lunch around here. You know, this is the trouble for B1 and indeed B2, that, you know, they can't override the law of economics.